It has come to my motherfucking goddamn day attention that besides my Justin Bieber bang looking absolutely fabulous, I have to read Kimbo Slice. <laughs> Not that Kimbo Slice. I am talking about Kimberrell. Kimberrell is a very, very, extremely talented gospel artist uh, who I got wind of in college with my brother Donnie, and we were listening to her sing at somebody's funeral. I believe it was Willie Nelson's funeral. Somebody's funeral, and she was singing that, and she sounded absolutely beautiful. And she quickly became one of my favorite gospel singers, uh, aside from Kurt Franklin, who got that stomp on lock. But we already know me and Kurt Franklin go back the long way because I met him at the BET Awards in 2019. And let's just say, like song. Light. And I'm not talking about sexuality. I'm talking about the God in him saw the God in me. Uh, with that being said, Kimberell has recently taken fire because of some comments that she made to a congregation. These are the comments that she made. You gotta choose up. Find you some value. You know, sometimes before we get friends, we have to do an interview. How long have you been broke? How many times have you changed your name on your light bill? <laughs> <laughs> How many of your bills in your little cousin's name? <laughs> Do you live in a trailer home or a house? You know, you understand. And it's not about status or material things. It's just about choices. You know, life is different now. And, you know, we are at church. Thank God we're here. Those of us who are walking by faith without a mask and no vaccine. And so we, we honor the Lord. God is good. I respect all of the men of God here and respect you. Can y'all clap so I don't feel strange right about now? Hopefully we'll get a chance to meet each other when y'all invite me to come to your church. I'm not as expensive as I seem. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe you got a little left over from your PPP loan. <laughs> Prayer, praise, and power, you understand. Amen. Isn't the Lord great? Amen. Amen. And so, you know, I, I like coming here because the ground is already tilled with great personality like Dr. Karn. Because one thing I love about him, he's deep in the word, but he knows how to have great humanity. And most don't understand his personality because he is truth personified. And he tells the type of truth that makes most uncomfortable. Because who likes to be told? You're just ugly. <laughs> No one likes to be told that, you know, especially when they have realized it. All right. Most don't get offended until they know the bad thing about themselves. And then somebody else recognizes and says, oh, I saw the ugly too. I just wanted to let you know. So anyway, y'all get that later. God is great. All of you are beautiful. I haven't chosen anyone to be ugly yet. God is good. God is great. Y'all look great. Most of you have on hats covering most of that anyway. Here's to you. Uh, I have a great personality. Okay, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. Daily I shall. Okay, there is so much to unpack before I even read anything. I'm just going to continue with the story before I render my opinion in a nationwide reading on Kimbo Slice at this point. Um... After this, she presents a statement, uh, and that statement is elegantly displayed as of right now. You guys can read that at your leisure. Uh, after that statement was elicited, I guess the gospel and the Christian community really wasn't feeling it that much because she actually had to go back and say that the statement that she wrote as an apology wasn't an apology written by her. It was written by an attorney. But if you look at the texture of the letter, oh no, baby, you wrote that, and I'm going to read that momentarily, but let's just see exactly exactly her apology and what she said. Hello everybody, this is Kimberell. I'm sorry. I mean it. I mean that. Not from the letter, from my heart. I released a letter two days ago. It did not convey right at all. And I must tell you this, it was from an attorney that asked me to do it because the latter part, y'all know I know, it was offensive. It should have been. It was not my intent.
for it to be, but it was her wording to say they need to be aware because of the person you are and that. I said, nah. My friends called me and said, no, there are still people who are hurt from the part of them that they love about you. Come back. That's not the only reason I came back, because I still said, come on, but they didn't feel my heart. I came back because I do love you. This ain't about dates. This ain't about keeping my career. This is about keeping the love real. I love you guys so much. And I'm really, truly sorry. I did not want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't plan on hurting you. And I pray that you will heal from this. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. I love you. Wait and see. I do. Because now it's the problem. Okay, so this was the latest information that I gathered about uh, the Sermon from Hell by Kimbo Slice. Uh, first, let me bring this into context really quickly. I'm not Christian, but I have nothing against Christians or anything like that. But apparently Christians have something against me. Uh, I'm gay. I practice witchcraft. Um, and I, let's just say, am the antithesis of what a traditional African-American Christian would find feasible for their congregation. Kimberrell was once under fire for coming against the gays as as well um, and I, that received some backlash she goes in her little cubby and then comes out six months later making appearances looking like a goddamn bug okay this is what I have to say uh, about this first I do not want to make this a religious reading I respect all religions I believe that whatever path to God you take is your path and it should be respected and commended that's what I feel okay I'm not about encouraging anybody to believe one thing. I'm not uh, about uh, making people feel less than for believing something. I also believe that God and Jesus represent love of all creatures. And we as men don't have the power or we should not, uh, in your word, even suggest that Christian community uh, to judge other people based upon who they are and what they believe, let alone calling them ugly. Uh, so I don't want to make this a religious argument, but I do want to talk about the business of church. When Kim Burrell said that uh, about the gay people, you got to keep in mind, gay people are doing the first lady of the congregations here. Gay people are your choir directors. Gay people are singing first soprano on the choir. How do I know? <laughs> because I can do that. Okay, hold on. Let me do it again. <clears throat> I can't do it right now, but you know what I'm capable of. Y'all heard me sing my Sheba before, okay? <laughs> I think that she offended a lot of people that do not want the truth solicited uh, in, in, in the Christian community. See, this is what I've learned. And again, I'm an individual who did have to go to Christian school when I came out of the closet because my mother thought that she did something wrong. Um, and I went to Victory Christian School here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's so funny how many of those became fans of me in our adulthood. Uh, I got kicked out of that university because they tried to paddle the gay out of me and I fucked that office the fuck up because guess why? Because <laughs> now it's the problem. Exactly. Um, um, so when that went down, I kind of got a context of the Christian community um, and the mentality they're in. I believe that Kim Burrell is a Christian. I believe that she does have a individual relationship with God that is unconventional to the blanketing cult-like concept of what Christianity is supposed to represent. And being a celebrity in the gospel arena, I feel as if when her comments are deterred or not received in the same way that she's soliciting them, she flails like a goddamn fish out of water. And this is exactly what we are bearing witness to for the second time as of right now. I believe that Kim Burrell has a voice of a God. She has the voice of an angel. I have never seen the trembling in somebody's voice at in the way that she's doing. And I will tell you the truth. She has set a precedent over the context of gospel music. She is a, 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 a root singer. I believe that she can change the world with her voice when she sings, which is why she hurried up and tried to sing after that debaucherated sermon. Uh, I, in terms of a reading, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. But first, I want your opinion on what she said. I, I believe that she was 
in the belief that she was being humorous. I think that she thought she was being funny. I think that in the moment when that limelight is on you and all of that attention from all of those people were on you, you got what's known as diarrhea of the mouth and you couldn't control kind of the humor from the insult. If you even look at the video that uh, was just elegantly displayed for you, you can see that they cut to a shot of a lady wearing a big ass traditional Southern Baptist black church hat. We known for the hats, honey. We known for the pomp and circumstances and let the Christians say that they known for being looking good for God. Knowing damn well you looking good for the people that ain't got that hat or money to afford your outfit, but that's neither here nor there. I also had a conversation with a constituent of mine prior to, and uh, something that, and again, this is not a religious reading, but I have to say this. The truth works for Christians when it works for them. She told the truth in a lot of ways in this. I'm not going to scrutinize what she said too, too, too harshly, because I believe that some of what she said was true. Like she said... People is ugly. People is ugly in church. Yes, uh, she wasn't necessarily speaking aesthetically. She was talking about the texture of your spirit. And she says she uses the hat as a metaphor, meaning that you're concealing the ugly that you have. But this goes back to one of the tenets in witchcraft. Your intention is everything with what you cast. And I believe that her intention was not to flaw, but I believe that she got caught up in the celebrity-ness of her being Kim Burrell in that moment. I have to be honest with you, I was thoroughly entertained. Okay, I was thoroughly entertained by that sermon. I think that was the best sermon I've heard all year, to be honest with you. Um, and I can understand why it is controversial uh, for the Christian community to have her up there like that. But it's time to read. I have some questions. <clears throat> uh... Okay, first things first. Um, did Kim Burrell's attorney write that apology? No, she wrote it, but she had some uh, legal people look over it before she actually put it out. So she got the stamp of approval from uh, legal attorneys and things of this nature, but she did not uh, uh, get it sp explicitly written by a legal, a legal team. When she was up there, what the hell was she feeling? She felt like the, the, the crowd was on her side. She was crowd blind. Crowd blind is what happens when a celebrity gets on stage and you completely lose the receptivity of your audience. You hear the oohs and the eyes and you're mistaken booze for cheers. So she really thought she was actually uh, saying something at that, <laughs> at that time. Um, is Kimberell, would she define herself as a true Christian? Yes, she is. She loves the Lord. That's what that says. She loves the Lord, honey. Amen. I just pulled this card just off a of cup. Didn't have a question, but it is the porcelain tarot card, which is basically a card of a narcissist. So I believe that she might have a bit of some narcissistic tendencies when it comes to her and her portrayal. Um, is she sincerely apologetic for what she said? This says no. <laughs> the homo sapien card shows up upright, which basically will allude to her not necessarily being apologetic. What, what does she feel right now about her statements? The, she feels justified in it. This is the King Queen upright, another card of narcissism. She feels justified in what she said. Okay, so why did she apologize? Because nobody else felt justified. <laughs> This is the Viper card upright. As you can see, this is Nelson Mandela looking in the mirror and he sees a snake staring back at him. In reverse, this is displeasing to oneself. So she she's displeased at the reception of something that she was very proud to, to say. Uh, what is going to be her moves now? Quarantine is upright. She's going into hiding. Okay? She's going to go into hiding. She's going to be ducked off. I think we might see her around a Christmas time period. Um, it, just as I my opinion predicted, it's funny how my opinions and my readers kind of coincide, don't they? I will also pull one more card. Um, is the gospel community going to forgive her? The zhuzh card is upright. As long as she sings, there will be forgiveness. Let us praise the Lord.
because now it's a problem. This has been a nationwide reading by none other than the best with no breast. Boots Tarot, my darlings. Please hit share, like, and follow this video. And please tell me what you think in the comment section. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.